This is section 2.1, the tangent and velocity problems, content objective 4, where we're going to apply these concepts of secant and tangent slopes to a real world setting. So with content objective 4, we're going to connect the concept of secant slope and tangent slope to average and instantaneous rates of change. And after we do this, I would like you to be able to list at least five scenarios in real life where knowing the average or instantaneous rate of change could prove beneficial. Before we move into some problems, I would like to look at some vocabulary. We have three new vocabulary terms that you will need to know, and what's fortunate is that they're very similar and very connected to what we've already done. First is position function. Well, a position function is like any other function. It will have an input value and an output value, which will generate points on the graph. So the position function in our case will typically be named s of t, where time is the input, or x of t, again, where time is the input, or y of t, where time is the input. And the outputs of these functions will yield the position of an object at any time t. So graphically, the inputs, or the x-coordinates, will be the time, and the outputs, or the y-coordinates, will represent the position, or where the object is at a given time. Now, if we want average velocity, before we hit calculus, we would often say if we traveled 300 miles in 5 hours, then our average speed, or our average velocity, would be 60 miles an hour. And how we got that was we figured out the distance that was traveled, and then we divided by how long we were traveling. So in this scenario, when we have a position, function, we can get the distance traveled by looking at where we end up minus where we start. That will be the total distance that we've traveled. And then we can divide by when we ended minus when we started. So we're looking at the distance traveled divided by the time elapsed. Now hopefully looking at this expression, you realize that it looks an awful lot like the slope formula. We've got a y-coordinate minus a y-coordinate over an x minus an x. So in essence, this is a secant slope on the position curve. Now if we want an instantaneous velocity, in other words, we're in a vehicle and we want to look at the speedometer and know exactly how fast we're traveling at a particular moment in time, then we have to think about this slope interval between the times getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're looking at a limiting value, or the instantaneous rate of change, or the tangent slope on that position curve. With example 1 now, we can see how we can apply these concepts of average and instantaneous change in the context of position and velocity problems. So here we, here we are given the position, s of t, of a certain particle moving along in a straight line, where t is measured in seconds, and the position is measured in feet, and we have the position at any time will be the time cubed divided by 6. If we look at the parts, we're looking for an average velocity or a secant slope for two different time intervals, and then we're also looking for the instantaneous velocity. Because we're going to have to compute three different slopes using this function, I'm going to go to the calculator and plug the function in. So if you turn on your calculator, and recall that y editors are going to be in the same place no matter which ti calculator you're using, we can access that y editor by going diamond f1. And once we're here, we can put in our function. Notice that just like on the TI-84, you're going to have to use x's as opposed to t's anytime you're in the function editor. So we will enter x cubed divided by 6 and hit enter. Now we have stored the function inside our calculator's memory, so we can access it on the home screen by using y1. So if I go to my home screen, I realize that if I want the average velocity on the interval from 1 to 3, I'm going to have to use two points that correspond to a time of 1 and a time of 3. And I'll need the outputs, or the positions, that correspond to those particular times. So if I want to compute this now, I will get the average velocity, which is the secant slope, will be the position I end at minus the position I start with over the time I end minus the time I begin. On my calculator, I can estimate this, or get the decimal approximation if I want, by using y1 of 3 minus y1 of 1 
divided by 3 minus 1 or 2. So back on the calculator we can see here that I can put y1 of 3 minus y1 of 1 now remember to put parentheses around your entire numerator and your entire denominator unless it's a single term. In this case, since it's a 2, I can just put enter. And notice that it gave me a fraction of 13 sixths. Because the 13 came from a position minus a position and position was measured in feet, this will have a unit of feet. And because the 2 or the 3 minus 1 came from a difference in times, and time was measured in seconds, the unit here will be seconds. If we repeat the same process now with 1 and 1.5, then we'll be looking at y1 of 1.5 minus y1 of 1 over 1.5 minus 1. So put this into your calculator. Don't forget your parentheses. and then divide by the 0.5. Hit enter. In this case, we got a decimal approximation. One thing you need to bear in mind, and do not ever forget for this entire year, because you will get dinged, both in my class and on the AP, is that when you choose to give me a decimal approximation for your answer, you must always give me a minimum of three decimal accuracies. So you got to go out to the thousandths place. You can go out and truncate or you can go out and round. I don't care, but one of those two must occur. So we can say that this is approximately 0.792 feet per second. Now with part B, we want to estimate the instantaneous velocity. Now because we have a function, that's pretty straightforward. We just want to look for an output that is really close. So we'll have a point zero 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 one plugged into the function and then subtract what comes out when I plug in 1, make that the top of my slope estimate, and then put the difference between the times on the bottom. So this secant slope where the points are very, very close to one another will approximate the instantaneous velocity. So if I go back to my calculator, it's the same function. I'm going to use my arrows now so that I don't have to retype everything and put in 0, 0, 0, 1. And then on the bottom, instead of a 0.5, I'll have a 0, 0, 0, 0.0001. Hit enter and we can see that that secant slope with the points very close to one another is really close to 0.5. So we can say that instantaneous velocity is probably going to be 0.5 feet per second. With example 2 now, rather than getting an explicit function, we have data. So we're going to have to approach this like we did in Objective 3. To find the average velocity, that is a simple secant slope, which requires two points. It said we want to start when time is 2 and end after 3 seconds. So if we add 3 seconds to the 2, we're going to end when time is 5. To get the y-coordinates, we simply look at the chart. So 2 goes with 32 and 5 goes with 178. So our average velocity in this scenario will equal 178 minus 32 over 5 minus 2. I'll let you put that into your calculator just to save yourself some time. And we get 146 over 3. Again, we look at our units. We subtracted feet, which were our output values, and we divided by a subtraction with our input values, which were measured in seconds. So we end up with an average velocity of 146 thirds feet per second. Now some of you are probably uncomfortable leaving an answer like this and you'll prefer a decimal. So how you generate a decimal on the TI-89, I would prefer that you stay in this auto mode. If you aren't here, then we'll talk about it in class. But when you're in auto, what that means is that you will always get an exact value when it is available, and then you'll get a decimal point if you either put decimals in or no exact value is available. So in this case, we can override the calculator's desire to give us an exact value by hitting diamond and enter. When you hit that diamond, you're accessing this approximate value here. So you could also have put 48.667. 
Now with part B, we're estimating the instantaneous velocity when time is 2. So remember from objective 3 that when you're trying to estimate a tangent slope and all you have is data, you must use the flanking points. So in this case, we'll have 70 minus 10 over 3 minus 1. We get 60 over 2, or 30 feet per second approximately. Remember that we are just approximating that instantaneous velocity. So to finish up this objective, I'd now like you to try and list at least five scenarios in real life where knowing the average or instantaneous rate of change could prove beneficial.